All right, so I mentioned this in the intro video, but I wanna bring it back up in case you missed it or you skipped right to this video so you could start installing stuff, which I get, by the way. Uh, but I wanted to bring it up because this repo is very important for the rest of this course, the next nine or so videos. It includes all of the code and all of the commits that I make in all of those videos. So the link is in the description of this and every other video in this series. It includes detailed commit messages. Um, I'll talk about in each video which commit I'm currently on. So I do type everything from scratch. It is true code along. But if you want to reference the changes I'm making, or if you get lost, or you just want to look at it without the video, click on a commit and you can see the diff. You can also see the notes I've written up top. And if you're more comfortable with Git, then clone it and just check out each commit as you go. All right, so this is the initial state of our application, a very, very simple app that we're going to add Webpack into and configure it in a couple different ways. Uh, and you'll see it gets surprisingly complicated uh, just to do a couple of the basic things. Now that's not a dig at Webpack, it's just uh, maybe a bit of damage control on my end, just uh, to let you know that this stuff, it can be annoying or difficult to follow, which is why I gave you the GitHub repo so that you don't have to type everything yourself. Uh, if you want, you can follow along that way, but you can also just you know check out each commit as I go and you'll be able to see what's happening. So the code right now is the initial commit. There is no Webpack. It's a single index HTML, a single app.js file, and an SVG image. So you can see uh, here's our HTML. There's a single script tag at the bottom. App.js has 40 something lines. Imagine that it's 4,400 lines instead of 40 and that will help make it clear why Webpack really makes your life easier once you get it set up at least. Okay, we also have uh, some content, of course, and then I'm using Bootstrap from a CDN, so unchanged. Eventually, we'll actually be using local Bootstrap, we'll be writing some SAS to override different variables, change colors in Bootstrap, and then use Webpack to bundle it all together and make it work. But for now, it's coming straight from a Bootstrap CDN, unchanged. And this is what the app looks like when I just open the index HTML. I'm warning you, it's extremely simple and not exciting. We have two inputs styled with Bootstrap. I can add numbers together by clicking, only adding, unfortunately, and it prints out your result down here. So some simple JavaScript and some extremely simple validation. If I put numbers, I mean letters in here instead of numbers, I get this alert styled by Bootstrap that says, please enter two valid numbers. AASD is not a number, blah, 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 is not a number. So it's actually really horrible validation because you can cheat it as long as you have a number in that string. So this is going to be one plus 12, which gives me 13, even though those aren't valid numbers. But that's not really the point. The code, the content of the code doesn't really matter much. It's more about just having JavaScript that we break up having some SAS, having some CSS, having an image, uh, that's what really matters. So don't get too hung up on that because the same stuff I'm gonna show you will apply to more exciting, more complicated applications. But I wanted to make something simple enough to follow along with. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is break my code up into separate files. So that will take us into commit two. If you're following along, that will be the second commit. So there's a couple things that I can break up from my app.js. First of all, we have these different functions. I'm gonna put those in their own file, uh, each one in its own file in a utilities or a utils directory because we might wanna use those somewhere else in the app. In checking if inputs are valid, checking or parsing inputs, that's functionality we could use somewhere else. Also, you know, we're just breaking it up so that we have something to bundle. It's not very fun to bundle a single file. Uh, I'm gonna make, uh, actually I'm gonna refactor our code to have two services, an alert service and a component service. And then I'm gonna have a, a function called run that actually starts all of our code. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna make a new folder inside of source called app. And then inside of that, another new folder called utils. And then the first utility will be parse-inputs.js. And I'm just gonna cut this code right there and put it in this file. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for our second utility function, which is called inputs-r-valid.js. And I'm gonna cut this out and paste it in right here. There we go. And I'll fast forward through some of these changes, but I'm gonna make a couple more files just so you can see the file names. In the app, I'm gonna have alert.service.js. I'm going to have a component.service.js. And then I'm actually gonna move my app.js into app. So I'm gonna delete this when I'm done. 
Okay, so I'm gonna fill out these files. Uh, again, it's the second commit if you wanna see how I broke the code up for yourself. Okay, so I'm back. This is the alert service, it's a class called alert service. Uh, I just moved a lot of the code into this. It relies on inputs are valid, for example. We also have component service, which doesn't have any dependencies uh, so far. And then inside of app.js, the real, the new app.js, I'm gonna delete the old one. That's outside of my folder. Now it's just all in this app folder. So I have my utilities, two functions, and then I have alert service, component service, and then app.js is going to instantiate new instances of alert service and component service, call them alert service and component service. And then it has a function called run, which accepts an instance of alert service and component service. And I'm calling that at the bottom. So this is what actually starts the app. Everything else is just a, a function definition or a class definition. But this function run is what actually runs the code, what starts everything. So don't get too hung up on the code. It's not really the focus. Uh, it, all that matters is that we have code spread across different files. So now my index.html needs to change because I'm linking to the old app.js, but now it's inside of the app directory. So source slash app slash app.js. That should get me that file but you probably can tell already this is going to be problematic. If I try and run it, refresh the page, there's an error. Alert service is not defined. Okay, so this is sort of a heavy handed way of sh proving a point that managing dependencies is tricky. It's not so bad in this example, but we have alert service. We need to make sure that that has loaded first. We need to use component service before we can run this code. So app.js depends on those two. But then we have alert service, which itself uses inputs are valid. So we need to make sure that it's aware of inputs are valid. Right now, all that we're actually including is a single script for app.js. We have to manually include every other file. So I'm gonna do that now, I'll fast forward. Okay, so I now have all of those scripts, but once again, I need to change the order because some of them depend on one another. So app.js, I'll just put that at the bottom because it depends on everything else loading first. And now, are we good to go? Let's see. Okay, it's working. So that's a very simple example, but if we have a thousand dependencies or a thousand files and each one has 10 different dependencies or something like this from the previous video, this React app that has 20 something React components, each one has a bunch of dependencies at the top. Here's a different component, a whole bunch of other dependencies. So if we're trying to manage this ourselves, it's a nightmare. Which one loads first? Instead, we use Webpack. Okay, so we're not using Webpack right now. We're doing it manually, and the point is that it sucks. So we're now going to install Webpack. So this is the end of commit two right now, if you're following along. Commit three includes installing Webpack and getting it up and running. So that is what I'm gonna do right now. Okay, so to install Webpack, the first thing we need to do is actually set up our package.json. So I'm gonna do an npm init. I'll do dash y just to make it faster. It doesn't ask me all those questions. Now I have my package.json. And I'm gonna begin by adding to my git ignore the node modules directory, just so that I'm not committing that. Uh, you don't have to do that, of course. And then in my package.json, where'd you go? I'm gonna get rid of this scripts for now. Uh, we'll be adding our own script in just a moment. So we've got name, code, that's fine. I'm gonna set private to be true. Again, doesn't impact anything as far as Webpack, but uh, it just prevents it from being published on npm. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is install webpack. So npm install dash dash save dev webpack. And if I just did this, it would actually prompt me to install a second package, which is called webpack dash CLI, the command line interface. And we want that as well. We want both of them. So this sometimes takes a little bit. So I'll be back once it finishes. Okay, so that wrapped up. Now we have both of those dependencies in our package.json. Next, we're going to set up a script inside of this scripts portion, the scripts property of our package.json, and we'll go with start. So when we run npm start from the terminal, it's going to call webpack, just like that. That's actually all we have to do for now. We'll, we'll change this, we're gonna configure webpack, but out of the box, this will work, and we can actually give it a shot right now, but we're gonna run into a few problems. So before we configure Webpack, we, we will be configuring it, 
uh, and telling it all sorts of different things, that it, how it should work, how it should handle certain files, where it should put certain files, how many it should bundle, what it should name them, blah, 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 blah. Uh, but by default, when you install it and you don't configure anything, you don't have a configuration file, it has a couple of default values. And we can actually see one of them if I just do npm start right now. It's going to call Webpack. You can see right there. Uh, where are you? Webpack. But if you look at the error, it's telling me it can't resolve dot slash source. So it's actually not the most clear error. But what it's saying is it can't find index.js inside of the source directory. The default entry point that it's looking for, what it's craving, is an index.js file instead of source. And the reason it says dot slash source instead of slash index afterwards is because when you require an entire directory in Node, uh, the index.js is what is used by default. So it's not finding it, so it's not happy. So let's make an index.js inside of our source folder. Index.js, this is where it's going to look. Let's add an alert, hello from Webpack. We'll save. Now let's see what happens when I run npm start. Once again, by default, we didn't configure it. It's looking for that file, so we made it. Now it's also saying something about a main.js. It built our code into main.js. Okay, and there's also a warning down here. We didn't set the mode option, so it falls back to production. We'll talk about that uh, later in this little mini course. So if we look, there's a new folder. I did not make this folder manually. It's called dist, and there's a file called main.js, and it contains a lot of random stuff. Well, it's not random. I hate when people misuse the word random, even though I just did that. It's not at all random. Uh, it's very important webpack magic at the top. And then you can see buried in there is our code. Now it's actually wrapped in some, some braces and parens and curly braces. That's because webpack isn't just adding our code as just a, a I don't know, regular code to the end of the file. It's not just appending it down here. It's wrapping it with some Webpack magic. And in the next video, we'll actually take a look at it and understand what it's, well, try and understand what it's doing. Uh, but for now, it's good enough to see that our code is in here. So it has nothing to do with the rest of our app. It has nothing to do with these component services, with the logic of that little calculator. It's not even loading right now. So let's fix that. Let's go into our index.html and at the very end, include another script. This one, instead of app slash app.js, it's going to be dot slash dist slash main.js. This is the file Webpack spit out for us. This is what it just built. It's very simple. It took one file in, it had a single line, and it spit it out with a whole bunch of other lines. But that's all the Webpack magic I was talking about. We'll come back to it later. So now if I go back, refresh, we're getting this hello from Webpack. That alert is working, so seems to reason that if we put other code in here, it would work, and that's just what we're going to do. We're gonna put our code from the app in this file. But that's actually coming up next because it's not as simple as just you know copying and pasting it because we wanna keep it across the different files. So we're gonna use ES6 import and export to do that for us, and then Webpack will build this one file. Uh, but the other thing we're gonna do in the next video is configure Webpack, set up a basic configuration file. Right now, it's looking for index.js and it's spitting out the code in dist main.js. We didn't tell it to do that. So it's, uh, it's rampaging on its own. We're gonna try and rein it in and, and tell it exactly how we want it to work. The last thing I should mention, uh, I'm going to add the dist directory into my git ignore because just like node modules, both of these directories don't need to be included when I push this up to GitHub. They just take up space and you can derive both of them from the code. You run npm install, you get node modules. If you run npm start, Webpack will build the disk directory with the main JS. So I'm not going to include it with Git. All right, so we're now at the end of the third commit, if you're following along. The next commit that we'll do in the next video has to do with telling Webpack all about our app code and configuring it. If you enjoyed this video, my cat and I really appreciate it. If you share it with anyone you think would get something out of it, uh, leave a comment, subscribe please, turn on notifications. Oh, so annoying asking you to do that. Anyway, uh, have a good day and I'll see you in the next video. All right, thanks.